Hi everyone, it's Anthony from Don't Crop Me Now and as you can see it is a beautiful sunny day here in Manchester in the UK. Now I'm down at the allotment today just to run through a few of the jobs that I've been up to this last week. Now why have I been doing jobs this last week? I've taken a week off work because unfortunately Rachel's been really unwell with sciatica. So she's not been able to do a lot of the planting jobs that she would normally have done on her Mondays off. She's just not been able to do anything for two weeks. So I've been coming down, I've done some planting, and I've also taken the opportunity to do some maintenance jobs around the plot. So I'm at the back of plot four, next to our trusty shed, and the observant amongst you may notice that I've moved the water butt. Now the water butt used to be at this end because the greenhouse for the community plot didn't used to be here. So it wasn't an issue about accessing the water butt and this small bit of space. But with the community greenhouse being here and the door being at this end, that means it was just, it wasn't uncomfortable, it was just awkward trying to get through that gap, squeezing past a big water butt. So I've just swapped the gutter around, moved it to that end, and we now have the water butt at the back. There is a little table at the back holding a couple of storage containers of liquid fertilizers. That can easily be lifted out if I need to get behind the shed to do any maintenance. One of the other things we've added is another bin with a sealed lid that we can use to collect um, like put comfrey weeds in and things like that to build the plant fertilizers, natural plant fertilizers. And on the subject of the liquid fertilizers, just in the very small gap between the community greenhouse that belongs to plot 5A and our greenhouse on 5B, we have a small 50 litre plastic bin. That is full of comfrey leaves and liquid seaweed mixture. I spilt a small amount of that on my legs when I moved it and it absolutely reeks. Rachel assures me it's great for the plants, but it stinks like liquid death. I have to admit it's a shame Mark wasn't here when that happened because he's even more sensitive to smells than I am. He would have been retching and I'm not going to open that lid because it is, does stink. So I'm on plot 5B and this is our manure storage. Now you can see that there's very little left. Uh, I've been putting the manure out on a lot of these beds on 5, 5B. I did this with Mark a few weeks ago um, and I've put a load on the beds on plot 4. You can see here there's not very much left, probably about 20 centimetres of depth at the front of this one and this manure bin is completely empty. One job I did do, these, there was two scaffold poles in here holding the pallet in for the front. It's kind of unwieldy to get the pallets out when the manures fell through um, and also what had happened was this side of the pallet bin had folded out that way so it wasn't dead straight. So with a bit of effort I got this thing out of the ground, well it's, it's partner out of the ground, this one's wobbling a bit because I've been messing trying to get that one out and I've driven it in on this side to keep this nice and square and when we get over to plot 2B I'll show you what I did with the compost bins over there and I'm going to repeat that process. So I'm now over on plot 2B. Uh, regular viewers will know that plot 2B is mostly our fruit and our polytunnel due to the layout of the plot. So we have the fruit cage on my left and here on my right we have our three bay composting system. Um, so one of the jobs I did, as I mentioned over there, when you've got a pallet on the front, the compost gets stuck in the back of the pallet, makes it really difficult to lift out makes it just unwieldy and messy to deal with, even more messy than compost normally is. So what I've done, I've got some U-channel galvanised steel and I chopped this pole in half, drove it down into the ground about 30 centimetres, so there's about 80 centimetres above ground and 20, uh, 20 or 30 below, and then I've just got some tantalised timber, this is just um, five inch boards that I would normally use to make the raised beds and just cut these to size and we've got six of those slotted in the front of this compost bay and it just makes it incredibly easy to deal with. If we need to take the compost out of this all you would do is you would take the top layer out, you would lift out the top board, take out the next layer, lift out the next board and so forth. Just makes it incredibly easy to deal with and I'm sure you'll agree given a choice between which one you want to look at because it is a compost bin that looks way nicer than that. And back over on plot four, and this large bed is our dahlia bed. Uh, we had a structure on here that was made out of bamboo garden canes. 
lasted about two seasons, nearly the, nearly made it into the third season before it all started breaking apart. So I've rebuilt this using a load of old broom handles chopped to length. And here I am on 5A, the community plot. Now, one of the things I did here, we like to use old wheelie bins. The council provides these for free. It's a wheelie bin that's probably lost its wheels and therefore doesn't wheel. Um, and what we do is we dig a little hole about a foot deep, 30 centimetres deep, and drop the wheelie bin in and then fill it with water. Now, 5A is quite, not really far, but it's far enough away from our water collection on the summer house and the shed into the big IBCs to warrant topping this up from the tap and then using it as a dunking reservoir for your watering can. Unfortunately, I filled it up, came back the next day, and it's empty. So it's got a leak in there that I didn't know about. So this season we'll probably just use it to store netting or garden canes or something or get stored in there. And then as a new wheelie bin becomes available, we'll just lift it out and put a new one in its place. Okay, and it's not all just been sort of DIY projects. I actually have done some planting, otherwise Rachel would have gone mad. Um, in this bed, I've planted out some onions and we've had to cover them because the magpies love pulling them all out and they literally will pull them all out they won't just pull one and go oh that's not a worm they'll empty the whole bed they'll all be lay there we've had to replant a couple so this is covered once they've been in a week or two they'll be big enough to not be fussed by the magpies and over here behind me i've sorted out all the potato tubs um these have got the hemp chippings the hemp bedding on there to protect as a weed barrier the potatoes are starting to come through and these are also netted because whilst the magpies don't pull them out they seem to love digging in it okay everyone so that's a little update from me about what i've been up to on my week off hope you've enjoyed it if you have please like comment and subscribe it only takes you a moment but it really helps our channel take care everyone bye bye